my name is Tammy Landis. Welcome into the Western Gallery. Wish we could all be here in person, but I'm going to give you a little bit of a walkthrough of our current exhibition, Insight, A New Realism. As you can see behind me, I'm surrounded by a lot of different mediums, um, surfaces, variations of the artistic process that have come together in this exhibition. So today, this exhibition, the Insight, A New Realism, is our 10 exhibiting BFA artists who actually graduated in the spring of 2020, but because of COVID-19, we had to reinstate their installation to the fall 2020. So we're looking at now our 10 exhibiting artists in all different mediums, all different perspectives, coming together, exhibiting their culminating projects from their BFA year here in the gallery under one space. So my role as a curator in this exhibition was to try to find some um, similar themes or parallels to what their work is addressing and coming up with the title, Insight, A New Realism. A lot of the work is addressing identity formation, the self, childhood, trauma, memory, nostalgia, but all through an artistic process. So I hope you enjoy this time as we get to dive into artists who are using the artistic process as a means to explore their identity.
Welcome everybody um, on behalf of the Western Gallery. I hope that you're able to see some little glimpses in that video about our exhibition. And it's very rich, very complicated. There's a lot going on there. And we are fortunate today to have two of our exhibiting artists with us. So two of the artists that were shown there in that video um, are gonna be with us today talking about identity and the sense of what does it mean to express or communicate you know, the self um, to others. And fortunately for us, these two artists have used the artistic process to do that. So we're gonna dive in um, and talk about those few things. So with us today, we have Amanda Cartel. So now Amanda, you can give a little wave. Um, and feel free to unmute now, Amanda and Sarah. Um, so Amanda is presenting us a work that's called The Dining Room. Um, that was one of the very last works that you saw me walking around was this very large dining table. Um, and this has very specific connotations to her growing up and her identity, so we'll dive into that. Um, and then Sarah Kindle, if you can wave, um, who's also with us here today. Um, and again, thank you both for your time being here. Um, Sarah's work was the model that the video kind of rotated around and it was a little bit of a um, quick video, but it was a model of Sarah's childhood home, a trailer home that is not existent anymore. It's no longer present. So there's so much to pull from why Sarah decided to create this space that's no longer accessible. And how relevant is that? Is that for all of us today that there's all these spaces that we can't access today that are no longer available? Maybe they're still there, but their doors are closed and we can't enter because they're places of community um, that we're no longer able to access. Um, so it's a pleasure again to be with you all. My name is Tammy Landis. I'm a museum educator at the Western Gallery and I'm really looking forward to diving into this topic of identity in relationship to art because there is so much to say about all artists and how they use their identity as a means to create meaningful bodies of work. And there's something to say about emerging artists such as Amanda and Sarah, who are with us today, that are utilizing their identity in a really deeply personal way and presenting it to the public. Like, what I mean, you know, we don't all have the gift that Sarah and Amanda do to tap into these creative processes and create successful works of art that are about our identity. Um, you know, most of us, and we'll talk about these in the chat room, we use and express our identity in different ways, but for us in this dialogue, um, we're going to be looking at how these two artists have used their identities as a catalyst for expression, as a catalyst for a means of communication and why they decided to use that in their bodies of work. So um, without further ado, I'd love to dive right in. So Sarah and Amanda, hopefully, yeah, you're unmuted. So you're, you're here. Thanks for being here, both of you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and uh, Sarah and Amanda are both still in Bellingham. Some of these artists from the BFA year have moved on to, to other cities and other places. And, you know, it's the effort to bring them in to uh, still install their work when they graduated in the spring. So it's a, you know, a really deep pleasure to have you both here. Um, so maybe Amanda, we'll start with you. And I know Chevelle, you do have some of the images. If you're able to pull them up, that's great. So Amanda's work is the dining room, um, the large scale table with the broken ceramics and the two paintings on the side. So Amanda, um, you know, I want to just read really quickly something from your artist statement and then we'll dive right in. So you talked about creating discomfort is the crux of my work taking a familiar space and distorting um, distorting it to contradict the preconceived emotions tied to the objects within it. So there's a lot to unfold there. You know, you're taking a space that is so familiar to you and you're distorting it and changing it. And a lot of this is in part of your identity revolving around the space, in particular, the act of consumption as we talked about. So maybe could you share with us, um, how is this work steeped in your maybe childhood identity or is this still a part of your, you know, your identity, who you are today? Is this still a scene that is hard for you? I think I would say actually like the beginning of the year, it might've been harder for me, but after months mm -hmm. and months of having to look at it on a daily basis, it sort of became more of 
an exploration of that time in my life. So mm -hmm. for me, I really wanted to take like the raw emotions of more of my adolescence than my current self and distort mm -hmm. the space um, based on the emotions. Sort of like when you first go into a building for the first time, it seems more complex and bigger than it actually is. Mm -hmm. Sort of taking the negative emotions um, mm -hmm. related to a dining room and acts of consumption and making that into a space. Mm -hmm. You know, that's interesting. You've chosen your identity more so a lot of the identity that you remember. So this mm -hmm. is a, a memory of, you know, a certain identity that's persisted yeah. and you're presenting it um, in an exhibition. And what does it mean for you to be presenting this you know, aspect of your identity to the public. You're making it open to everybody, including your family, including your friends, those around you. Yeah, uh, it's been an interesting experience. I say that, I would say the most rewarding um, part of that was that a lot of people have similar experiences that you are like, I'm able to connect with, even if they're slightly different than mine, they still relate mm -hmm. to my work in that way, which is really interesting and rewarding in terms of like revealing it to the public. I would say it was at first a little daunting and then uh, it was actually quite rewarding because it just sort of felt like a weight off my back. It's like mm -hmm. I had talked about it and now it's um, now it's out there for mm -hmm. people to connect with and explore and understand, so. Hmm. Did you initially feel hesitant at all to you know portray such um, personal work to the public? Um, a little bit, I would say, over the four years of going to school, it was definitely a topic that I just sort of avoided mm -hmm. and then decided to do this this last year. In terms of, I think the hardest part would be my artist statement and how I wanted to uh, phrase things in a way that would be acceptable to my family and people of the public and not too personal, but also personal at the same time, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so Sarah, let's, let's jump to you on some of these same ideas, right? Mm. So you're also portraying a space that's more specific to your childhood that is no longer available for you to go visit or see, and maybe is only kept in your memory, maybe through pictures, maybe not. Um, and so, you know, tell us, walk us through why you decided to recreate that space for um, this body of work and um, what it means for your identity formation, you know, the process of yourself. I feel like it was a renegotiation of, of memory mm -hmm. and the way that when we're children, we are kind of at the mercy of, of the adults around us mm -hmm. to make decisions that are really difficult. And while, you know, we might not have that agency to, to say what we need or what is right in that situation that like, this is just a kind of manifestation of all of those feelings and um, those experiences and like a way for, for me to go back into that time period. And that like, even though it might not exist anymore to kind of make a, a stage to perform those actions that I really needed to have happened to, hmm. I don't know, to feel, to feel some sort of like grounding. And um, it's been therapeutic. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a lot of it. So would you say it's been therapeutic in a way to be able to express it at, in the form of an installation and an exhibition versus you just, you know, talking through it? You have the capability and the skill set that you've created this installation and people have been coming in and experiencing it. Um, how does that impact, you know, your processing, your, your identity? Um, that that it's that I'm able to show these people this environment and have them engage with it and and create their own meaning is really important to me to because I feel like this this installation is kind of like it's how like I do identity building through like uh, it's hard to explain <laughs> um, I feel like a lot of it is like just trying to show people something that's really sensitive without being too blatant and being subtle and instead of being like, you know, hit in the face with like all of this trauma, you know, it it's kind of like, it tries to be inviting and I try to create an environment where people can kind of sit and and think mm -hmm. about their own childhood and, mm -hmm. and kind of look at these things that might be upsetting 
in this mm -hmm. this space but um not necessarily like hurt by it <laughs> or sure yeah so kind of you've created a portal i mean it's not just a you didn't just create a photograph or just a, a relief print that's flat on the wall. You're allowing a space for people to come in and to reconsider some of these notions that you're talking about. It's like a, a portal into memory for others. So not only are you expressing your identity, but you're creating a space that allows others to think through their identity and maybe specific to familial patterns of life, their environments and their spaces. Right. Um, and maybe you could share briefly, I know that if the exhibition would have been open to the public, we were going to have you do some performances, live performances within your exhibition. And I think that is really steeped in your identity too. Um, so maybe could you share briefly um, what that component would have been with your work? Um, as, well, I, I did some performance in that space and I recorded it on Instagram, but um, I, I create these these characters that are based off of um, kind of like, I don't know, uh, just very like broad concepts of how I identify as like a person who is like uh, feminine and, and either like queer and just, I, I try to, think about all of these like female roles that I viewed mm -hmm. as a child and kind of personify them. So I, I feel like this the performance that would have happened in this installation would be like a series of, of personifications of like, you know, the identities that I have like cultivated and to like kind of create this mm -hmm. um, sense of self of who I am now. Mm -hmm. You know, so there are all these different aspects. Yeah, definitely. And I think it leads me to this part of your artist statement that I'll share. Um, you wrote, it allows me through this work, it allows me to write a new narrative of my personal history, one where I am in control of my sexuality, identity, and pain. And I think Amanda, for you as well, um, and both of you, so maybe I'll let Sarah chime in first, but both of you have expressed how the act of creation has allowed you to control this memory to control this part of your identity to control the space and there's something to say there I mean for our audience it's not we can't all relate to creating a multi-sensory exhibition or installation we can we can relate to maybe writing it down you know our memory or writing down or sharing with a counselor or sharing with others certain memories as um, an act to try to remember it but here you're saying you know you're controlling this memory through the act of creation and expression. So um, I don't know if you have a thought there, you know, this idea of control. Sarah, maybe if you wanna go first, yeah. Oh, oh, um, I, I guess control is, is something that's really important to me because of my childhood and because of that trauma and mm -hmm. to like have the ability to create the actual environment where I feel like I can express all of these feelings that might not have mm -hmm. been like listened to. And I, it's, yeah, it helps me find some sense of peace in that like, I'm able to get all of those feelings out and then kind of like look at myself and say, okay, well, this is, this is how I really feel after all of that, like screaming and freaking out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. Amanda, what about you? You know, this idea of control. That was probably my biggest motivator for this work since I was recreating a space where I had a complete absence of control mm -hmm. it's like I ate what was given to me I ate with the people that I like I had to eat with my family uh and it was like my parents space so the idea of recreating my dining room from my mind mm -hmm. definitely became a really cathartic process and definitely speaking to the act of breaking all of the ceramics was definitely very controlling um and also very cathartic. I would say the whole piece was definitely about expressing my thoughts and my feelings, which I feel like we aren't really able to do a lot in adolescence and get mm -hmm. a response um, mm -hmm. from people that might necessarily understand. There's sort of this lack of control because your life is, is controlled by people who are older and are responsible for you. So I would say that especially with my work sort of continuing on what um, Sarah said, it was being able to take 
take the space as we remember it and sort of make it do what we want it to do this time, like this time for our art and for our, like for this exhibition, which is very nice and a good feeling. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I think um, for those that are listening that don't necessarily know, you know, your BFA year is really unique. You have, sure, you've completed your four-year degree, and then this is an additional year here at Western um, where you've applied, you've submitted a portfolio, and you have an intention of creating a certain body of work, and then you dive into that body of work for a year. So you've spent a year, if not more, you know, preliminary things that you've done in years before that all creates this moment of your BFA final um, body of work. But, you know, you could have created work on a lot of different things. And I know um, each of you have expressed like coming into the year considering different options, but you both um, discerned that what felt right to you was creating this work that was so deeply personal. Um, so I don't know if you have a thought on, um, uh, you know, what it meant to be submerged in a year process <laughs> surrounded by this work. Um, Amanda, if you want to go first. Uh, I, I was really looking forward to it. I would say, like, I planned on doing BFA throughout my four years, and I was really excited to get um, both, like, emotionally and physically invested mm -hmm. in a project mm -hmm. for an extended amount of time. Um, so I would say it was... It was really interesting because we also have um, our committee members which we meet up and then we explain our work and what we want to do and our thoughts behind it. And I definitely think that that was the first time where you're like, oh, this is actually what I'm doing. I'm gonna be submerged in this work for a year. I have to think about what I, I have to think about this project for an entire year. And so that sort of led me to be like, what can I talk about and think mm -hmm. about for a whole year Mm -hmm. um, that will continually interest me and make me mm -hmm. want to work on it and it sort of usually ends up being myself and memory and stuff that I already end up fixating on for mm -hmm. years and years and years mm -hmm. so yeah absolutely yeah. Sarah what about you I uh, your experience Amanda was very different from mine <laughs> um I didn't know I was going to be in BFA until a professor said that I had to apply <laughs> I was like I because I'm the first person in my family to go to college I it's I don't know what I, I didn't know what I was doing in college most of the time I was kind of just like moving through these like places and thinking like wow I feel bad I should do this in art to like feel better it was a lot of BFA was just it was like really intensive therapy for me. Mm -hmm. um, so it it was really nice to have the committee to to kind of take these like raw feelings and like organize them into like mm -hmm. really like specific projects. Um, and so, and I don't know, I keep on thinking about how this installation is kind of like a way of like working out this like dissonant feeling of like, my family life and my academic life mm -hmm. because my family life is very it's not there's no intellectual kind of interaction and there's no like delving deep into to like why we feel the way we do and then with like school it's and and the the BFA program it like was trying to look at these thoughts and like kind of delve into them and like identity building this whole like conversation we're having now is just like it's so nice to have that to kind of be grounding absolutely and, yeah. yeah yeah and I just want to give kudos to you both for you know presenting such personal work it's not easy to do and for all of us sitting here we're like I don't know what I would create like what would be the space that I would make and it's really hard to get there and it takes a lot of work um and especially in the artistic field and the art field as you're stepping into what's the start of your artistic career to like start that this is your body of work moving forward. It's, it's really monumental um, and it has a huge impact for what's going forward. But again, just like kudos to diving right into what felt important to you and listening to that. Cause some people feel intimidated and they don't and they just stick with something. Maybe that's a little easier, you know, to present, to represent. But I know as a curator, I am drawn to artists like yourselves that are not afraid to dive in to what's hard and challenging. Um, so I think there's a lot that each of us can pull from this of 
you know, identity work and thinking about how we express ourselves is not easy work. Um, and, you know, Sarah, for you to even say it's therapeutic to work through this. Definitely, there's something to, to say there. Um, Tammy, yeah. I want to draw your attention. Um, we do have a question from Gabe and then another question just came in. Okay. So I'll just start off with Gabe's, which was, I'm curious about how it feels as an artist to have physical displays put on at a time like this. We all are most isolated as people, and I wonder how it feels to be creating something so personal for public display, but then to have access to that display somewhat restricted as well. Mm. So I'll give you all the opportunity to respond to that and then share the next question. Yeah, Amanda, do you wanna go first? Um, I would say it was interesting because definitely when planning this project, we expected mm. it to be very, very public. I would have to say that I am both like sort of relieved that it's sort of more private and more intimate to experience. But at the same time, I did want it to, I wanted to have the large reception and be able to interact with everyone person to person and talk. Uh, in terms of how it made me feel, I would say it's interesting because after working with this project individually almost for a year, especially once quarantine started and I had to work completely alone, it's weird to be away from the work after a year um, and sort of have everyone experience it without me. Mm. Uh, so especially something so personal, it's sort of an interesting experience that feels, it's, I, I'm actually sort of happy that people get to um, create their own feelings and sort of be more like secluded in my mm -hmm. space personally, because mm -hmm. I like, um, I sort of, that's how I felt in my dining room was mm -hmm. sort of alone and secluded. So mm -hmm. I'm sort of happy. Thanks, Amanda. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Sarah. I definitely can like under, I agree with what Amanda said that it's nice to have um, people go in without the, like, the jarring noise of like all of the other students and everyone else like kind of in that space and to experience it like kind of one-on-one. -on -one but I, I still don't, I don't feel like it's real and that like I created this thing and that I had this really strong emotional attachment to it and then not having access to it and not being able to share it and like be present when someone else is engaging with it. It feels like, I, I don't, I don't feel like it's real. And like, <laughs> I, I've been really struggling with all of the the restrictions and stuff. I, I feel mm -hmm. like things aren't real right now, so. <laughs> It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And just for the context of everybody, um, so the Western Gallery is open, but we're only open to our Western community. So unfortunately, Sarah and Amanda and all the other artists couldn't even have their families come up. And I remember this moment of being in the gallery and Amanda's FaceTiming with her family who were standing like right outside. And it's just so challenging that they couldn't even come into the space, but we're respecting you know the policies and keeping our campus and our community as needed um, during these policies so these are some of the restrictions that amanda and sarah are talking about and let alone the steps we had to take to get them onto campus <laughs> and exhibiting and in installing their work so um, it's not just the doors were open come on in and bring your work it's been um, quite the process that we've all felt um, so i know that we have another question and i see it um chevelle so i'll just go ahead and read that um, thank you, Kieran, for your question. So the question is, I was wondering how Sarah and Amanda went about choosing their medium and how that medium connects to or expresses the ideas and experiences of their exhibitions are trying to create. And they said, I like the idea that Sarah's just posed that her art is inviting trauma. I think this is something that a lot of artists try to capture. So how does your medium connect to what you're trying to express? So maybe Sarah, if you want to start us. Um, so one. the the medium that I initially started off with um, in my my career at Western it was like printmaking, and so I feel like the process of printing and doing relief printing for all of the the wood paneling in the installation, it it becomes so repetitive and and meditative that. You know, I I feel like it it allowed me to kind of think about all of the the emotional aspects of creating this installation, yet like have mm -hmm. this this like kind of guard of like through repetition of kind of like feeling numb to it, 
and just kind of like experiencing it without too much I don't know too much intensity mm -hmm. <laughs> and and just the the idea of of crafting this whole installation like finding little aspects of like you know like things that I've collected over the years and things that I've seen in like secondhand stores and kind of just having that kind of control is really mm -hmm. um really helpful. I forget about the questions really quickly. So I'm sorry. No, that's okay. you were talking about the material and the process and how it connects, but you were saying yeah. the repetitive process of relief yeah. prints, which frame the the wall of your installation, which kind of sets the tone of everything because of that wood panel. And so that repetitive motion was yes. a, a portion of you kind of unveiling this too. So Amanda, for you, the materials, how does that communicate to um, the expression of what you're trying to create like how what's the material and i think this will probably have to be our last question um but go ahead yeah um yeah i mean i mostly chose the materials on more of a functional basis uh what a dining room would already be made out of so i would think that the most creative expression of material would be in my paintings mm -hmm. i def i took a lot from um i really liked sort of the chiaroscuro and religious paintings mm -hmm. and something that's spooky, but also really meaningful and that you, that you can derive a lot of symbolism from. So that was sort of the inspiration and why I chose to do sort of these really dark oil paintings on the side to get mm -hmm. that sort of um, feeling and emotional response. Yeah. Um, Chevelle, I see that you're okay doing one more question. Is that true? Yeah, I think you can take theirs and then all others, you can put them in there and we can shift them to the small groups. Okay, that sounds good. So. Um, we have a question. Thank you, Heather. Um, it says, did you immediately know what final piece uh, it would be, the final piece would be, or did it evolve over time? Um, Amanda, why don't you start us off? Um, I originally was going to do a significantly like almost vaguer piece with similar themes where I wanted to talk about cause and effect. So originally I was going to make gigantic ceramic vessels and break them with um, bordering drawings on the wall. So similar, but then after a lot of talking over it with my um, committee, they were like, eh, it might maybe a little more specific. And that's when I went to the dining room. And from the beginning of that specific piece, I had a pretty good idea of what it was going to look like, but there was a, a lot of experimentation while I was doing it. So, yeah. Yeah, thank you. And Sarah, what about you? Did you know your piece the entire time or did it evolve? I know I did something completely different the for, for the fall of BFA. Mm -hmm. I did a whole bunch of um like stuff regarding like uh performance and burlesque and like the the just something that was more comedic and I did like something totally different. Well, I really wanted to I wanted to explore the idea of making a home, but I felt like it would be too personal. Like I our families and creating art is really <laughs> difficult you don't want to like upset your parents yeah. and stuff so <laughs> um yeah I I started off with something completely different mm -hmm. but although I had like kind of inklings with like the work that I did the previous year I kind of touched on that but mm -hmm. I I just kind of like felt nervous so yeah sure yeah yeah absolutely um well I think we're about at time um for needing to jump into our breakout sessions which i feel are going to be very rich and uh, exciting so thank you all for being here um, and thank you again to amanda and sarah for your time today and for sharing and diving in especially talking about your identity it's not something easy to do let alone make artwork <laughs> that's you know uh, fueled by your identity so congratulations to you both on your bodies of work and for what they've meant to our community i know personally being in this space um, as people coming in, they spend a lot of time with your work. So there's something to be said there. Um, so just, it's been a pleasure to have you both as exhibiting artists and to have you here today. So thanks for your time. Um, so I think I'm going to let Nathan take it away to um, what we're doing next for the breakout sessions. And I'm going to share in the chat um, the link to the Western Gallery's website for this exhibition where you can see the online catalog. Um, and you can see more information about each of these artists as well as recorded artist talks that both of them had with me. So